What up, Pittsburgh Steel fans? Matty P here with another episode of Steelers Touching Under in our Steelers War Room series. The focus of the Steelers War Room series is putting you in the minds of Omar Khan, Andy Weidel, Mike Tomlin, and the rest of the Steelers front offs as they will put together a winning roster in 2024 and beyond, a roster that will hopefully compete for a seventh Lombardi trophy. Now, this video is airing at the start before the free agent tampering window or the tampering window for teams to re-sign their players. We've seen a lot of cuts. We've seen releases. We've seen an intention of a signing for the Steelers in Russell Wilson, our quarterback. That's the breaking news here. But the re reality is, is that now the tampering period starts before the new league starts um, on the 15th of March. This is that period where the free agency really kicks off. It kicks off at 12 p.m., 12 p.m. This is going live probably about 8 or 9 p.m. by the time this comes out. We're going to go through a number of free agent positions, the best of the free agents at positions of need for the Steelers. Let's crack into it. All right, now, I was going to start with quarterback, and as I'm preparing this, I find out Russell Wilson intends to sign with the Pittsburgh Steelers. So we don't have to talk about quarterback, um, but he wasn't on this list because he was a release, not necessarily a UDFA free agent there. Uh, Mac Jones was traded to the Jaguars, which is interesting. Mayfield signed with the Buccaneers. Um, Mitch Trubisky, former Steeler, bis risky business. Um, Bisky business, Trubisky, as Marky D likes to call him on our sh channel. Um, gone off to the Bills. We signed Russell Wilson. Apparently, it will come out probably by the time I wake up tomorrow morning. My time, it's late at night for me, that um, Russell Wilson will be signing for about $1.2 million vet minimum to the Pittsburgh Steelers. So that's exciting. So we'll move on from QB. We're going to get a wide receiver. Now, there are a heap of names on the list. Now, the key thing about this one is to look at is that T. Higgins, Mike Pittman Jr., Mike Evans are all kind of the three top wide receivers. They all sign franchise tags um, with their teams or sign multi-year deals. Um, it is interesting. Odo Beckham Jr. is still available, getting old. Curtis Samuel is still available. He could be interesting for the Steelers if they move Deontay. Um, Tyler Boyd's there. I don't want Marky D and I were talking about this, who I do the Steelers Touch and Underboys show with. Um, he also runs Steel Nation Australia. We were talking about it just before um, over chat, and I do not want Tyler Boyd. All the things he said um, since being with the Bengals, I do not want him in Pittsburgh. Michael Thomas is getting old from the Saints, so that doesn't seem like the right thing to do. Corridor Patterson on the cheap. That could be interesting because Arthur Smith was obviously his head coach for a while. Uh, Cedric Wilson Jr. could be an interesting pick from the Dolphins, I have a video already on the channel that I will link in here um, on DJ Chalk. I'm really keen on DJ Chalk. I think with the right amount of money, maybe three and a half million plus one and a half million in incentives could be interesting. Jerry Judy was moved from the Broncos um, to the Browns. That's interesting for the Steelers to have to play against him in the AFC North this year. Uh, Damaris Robinson re-signed with the Rams, so he's off the table. Nicole Harbin, you'd think he'd find a way to re-sign in uh, for the Chiefs, he's a key player for them. It's called the touchdown on the Super Bowl. Paris Campbell, I think, is going to struggle to get another contract. Kendrick Bourne, um, they haven't updated on this, but the rumor is he's signing a three-year, I think it's $33 million deal with the Patriots. Um, so he goes off the board. So really, DJ Chalk is kind of like the best guy here. LaVisca Chenault down the bottom is a guy I'm interested in in the Arthur Smith offense, but he should be getting a minimum. Um, so if you look at quarterbacks, unless the Steelers are going to trade for someone, uh, and or sign Calvin Ridley, which they might do now that they do actually have Russell Wilson coming to town or coming to town. Maybe, that was terrible, uh, but maybe that gets you in Calvin Ridley in the door. I, he's probably, Calvin Ridley and DJ Chalk are the two wide receivers I'd be open to the Steelers signing. Let's move on to tight end. Now, obviously the Steelers have got Donald Washington, Connor Haywood, Pat Freeman. Do they really need a tight end? Well, that's kind of debatable for some people, but I did want to quickly cover. You've got Will Disley out there. You've got Gerard Everett. Now, Gerard Everett could be a really interesting player for the Steelers because he can be quite a good receiver. He can be a good end zone weapon. Um, I mean, I love a guy like Mike Osecki, but the Steelers aren't going to spend that money. Everett, I reckon you can get for about four to five million or even cheaper. He, as I say, could be very interesting and I mean a really nice acquisition and give you something that you kind of don't have in that Pat Freeman does it all. Darnell's only proven to be a blocker so far. Connor Haywood's a small H-back, fullback style um, there, plus tight end. He's kind of like a triple threat there. But there's a lot of overlap in what those positions do at times. I like Everett as a receiving tight end for the Steelers. Likewise, um, you know, Robert Tunyon's out there, um, X there from the Texans. Um, so he could be an interesting sort of player as well. Um, you know, I kind of think... Nico Pruitt's kind of had it. Jimmy Graham's pretty old now with the Saints. 
uh, 38 years old. I don't I don't really see it um, on this list. So to me, as I said, I, I think it's maybe Tanya if you're really clutching. I think Austin Hooper's had it with the Raiders as well. North Dan was probably going to be too expensive for the Steelers. So when I look at it, I think if you're going to spend the money, you go get Seki, but then what? you probably aren't re-signing Pat Freeman. But I think Gerald Everett, if you get him at the right amount of money, that could be where the Steelers could really do something different um, at the tight end position in 2024. And it would give Russ another target as well. Moving on to the center position. Now, a lot of Steel fans out there want the Steelers to go draft Jackson Powers Johnson, or you might be aligned with Shannon White, who I do the Steelers go perspective with on bringing in um, a guy like Zach Frazier in the draft. Obviously, it would be great for the Steelers to get younger there. But equally, and the Steelers did release Mason Cole this year, it should be said that in free, just before free agency, um, you know, a couple of weeks ago. I like Connor Williams on this list. A lot of people have been rumored to want to bring Mitch Morse in. Mitch Morse is 32. I like the upside of Connor Williams. You can spread the, the spread the years. You could do a team option for a third year if you wanted to. So I kind of like um, the idea of bringing Connor Williams. He did have a bit of an injury cloud this year. He did spend some time on the sidelines. That goes against him. Brian Allen from the Rams is an interesting player as well. But I don't really like anyone else on that list, maybe apart from Lloyd Cushenberry. Um, but I actually think overall... Um, that Connor Williams is a better is a better talent, better prospect, can play guard if you had to do it, if you had someone else, if you drafted a center, he'd give you that versatility at the guard position as well. Um, so he last year he earned about $7 million. You're probably spending about the same on him now. Maybe you get him cheaper because of the injuries, but I wouldn't bet on it. Um, but yeah, he could be a very, as I say, very interesting player for the Steelers and would instantly be an upgrade um, on Mason Cole, as I think Brian Allen would be as well. We move over to right tackle because we know the idea is for the Steelers to hopefully bring in the left tackle, move Broderick over to the left tackle position. Again, the Steelers could very much draft a right right tackle very high in the draft. There are a number of guys here on this list that would easily be an upgrade on Chiefs core for Trent Brown. I mean, I think Riley Reef's getting a bit past the 36, but Mekhi Becton had a bit of injury cloud, but if you could get the healthy um, healthy Mekhi Becton, it would be an absolute wonder for this line versus a core four. Jonah Williams is out there from the Bengals as well. I think he'll be a bit more expensive than what the Steelers probably want to play, like Trent Brown. Um, I also think Trent Brown's trying to go out and win a Super Bowl toward the end of the latter part of his career. Um, but then there's not really anyone else, as you go down this list, that really inspires any confidence. Um, I don't think Jason Peters is going to be back for another season. Um, so, I mean, maybe win, but again... I don't, I don't love it. If you're going to spend the money on this position, you want to go the upgrade. And to me, Jonah Williams and Beckton are probably the most likely guys on this list. But hey, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Um, there are some death pieces here as well, like Chuba Hubbard. But um, yeah, it's it's a bit of a thin right tackle class, which makes you think the Steelers, it's a really good year to draft a tackle. Maybe they go tackle 20 off the board, like someone like an Amaris Mims um, out of Georgia. Now you get the list of the linebackers. Now this list is so long that you guys on your screen can probably barely see it. And that's because there's so many guys that are actually available this year um, for at linebacker. He's also a position of real need for the Steelers, as we know, because the Steelers have Quan Alexander off contract. Um, you've got... Cole Holcomb, who would spend a lot of time on the sidelines most of the year on the sidelines, injured. He's coming back from an injury. He probably isn't going to be ready to go week one. You then have Quan out. Um, so then you have a land of Roberts who had a great season, but he's not so much of your coverage linebacker. You then have Mark Robinson, who is still coming of age as a player. No guarantees he's going to be anything. It's a very interesting linebacker class. Devin White is probably the top name on this list in my my. Colleague Shannon White from God Perspective loves the guy. I thought he was the better Devin coming out of college as well. He was selected higher. The Probably the two best players plug and play today are Frankie Luvu and Levante David. But you've got to look at coverage, and then you could say Bobby Wagner's in there. I do like Isaiah Simmons. I just think he's going to sign for a lot because he's 26 years old, and the Steelers need a plug and play starter. This is another position as well um, that the Steelers – really need to look at in the draft, third, fourth round, a guy like Junior Colson, a guy like Jay Ford out of Texas. There's a couple of linebackers there that look pretty good. Um, that's probably what you want to look to do. But guys like Kenneth Murray, Jordan Brooks might come into the mix. I like Denzel Perryman, but we've got that thumper when if you think about what uh, Atlanta Roberts can do. 
Tierney um, Taki Taki out of the Browns is a great player. Again, I'm not sure he immediately upgrades you. The Steelers aren't going to go back to Devin Bush. Um, Jordan Hicks is someone that some teams will like. I don't particularly love it. I think there's better guys on the board if you're going to spend the money. Eric Kendricks could be a nice experienced guy, but again, you're starting to worry about age. So the Steelers, basically, when you look at the linebackers, are going to have a situation where they need to consider, do they go older and proven performer and a guy like Perryman, Wagner, Levante, David, even Alexander Johnson, who played with the Dolphins this last year, or do they, um, Jordan Hicks or Eric, or Eric Kendricks, or do you go younger and do you go get a guy? I mean, obviously, Quan's in the middle there at 30, so you can possibly bring him back. But then do you go get another top, top-notch top player that's younger at the position um, as well? Do you go get a Isaiah Simmons, who's 26, and Aziz Al-Shahir, out of the tight who played last year at the tight ends at 27. Um, you go get a Kenneth Murray or a Jordan Brooks. Um, you know, they're, they're some of the younger guys that you can consider uh, there as well. So it's going to be an interesting con- uh, challenge for the Steelers, um, but we'll see how they go when it comes to the free agency. I do think there will be a linebacker move lined up. I do think they'll make a move. A lot of people, I will say just one more thing on linebackers, a lot of people are out on Cody Barton. Don't be surprised to see Cody Barton at 28. He only played on a $3.5 million average pay per year contract most recently. He was a partner with Cole Holcomb. Don't be surprised him to sign a deal in Pittsburgh. All right, we then move on to the interior defensive line position. And again, this is a very long list for you guys. You probably can't even properly see it because it's so long on the list. But I wanted to make sure over the cap sometimes plays up when I'm streaming. So I wanted to make sure that you didn't get that interrupted. But the idea is you see a massive list in front of you. Now, obviously, Chris Jones and Matt Abuke signed. Matt Abuke signed. Um, I think it ended up being a $98 million deal over three. Huge money. Um, absolutely huge money. Leonard Williams, DJ Rito, Grover Stewart, Fletcher Cox, um, Fatakusi, although I've heard he's re-signing. Um, I, think, I think he's signing with the either the Texans or the Patriots. I can't remember. I think it's the Texans. Um, Sheldon Rankins, uh, Calais Campbell, who you know may be well retiring. Um, they're all available. Um, you know, in free agency this year. It's a very good crop of, of senior, I, I call it senior from their experience. I'm not I'm not saying necessarily their age, but experienced defensive tackles. I even like a guy like Aishon Robinson. He played terrific against, um, alongside um, uh, Donald at, um, at the Rams as well when he was with them, um, Aaron Donald. So, you know, there's Christian Wilkins is available. He's going to be way too expensive for the Steelers. But if you go get a guy like I'd love to see them bring in Grover Stewart or Fletcher Cox um, or a DJ Reader, that could be huge for this team. I think Leonard Williams will re-sign at the Seahawks. I've heard a lot of support for that. Even a Jordan Phillips out of the Bills, he could be a cheap guy that adds a bit of depth there. Um, but he's probably still going to cost you a bit more than what a guy like um, when Travis Adams cost you last year. I don't think they should bring him back. Or a guy like um, you know Almond Watts cost you as well. So in machine. Tim Settle, I thought, would do better at the Bills than he did. I kind of don't want the Steelers to take that pump on him. I did like him coming out of Washington, I think he was, prior to the Bills. Um, so it's kind of interesting, but that gives you a sense of some of the interior defensive linemen free agents that are out there right now. And then we go to the safety list, and that's just as damn long. The defense is very, very long. Jamal Adams is available. Again, I don't think he would, I don't love what he would cost the Steelers to acquire him. So saying it a little bit with Eddie Jackson and Justin Simmons, who both are more the free safety or a left or right safety rather than a strong safety. We want Minka to go back to free safety. I don't want them to look at Micah Hyde, Kevin Bayard, or Quandre Diggs, who are at the top of this list as well, based on average pay per year, because the issue that I have with them is that they're getting older. I don't think they're fully they're fully performing in a way that they did before. And, that, and then some of those guys are more free safety types, and the Steelers need a strong safety. Chuck Clark could be interesting out of the Jets um, or Jordan Whitehead, but I think Chuck Clark more so. He's 29 years old. Um, J. Ron Curse is probably getting a bit old from the Cowboys. I do like Adrian Phillips, but again, 32 years old out of the Patriots. I think we need someone who can make a compare with for a few years. Darnell Savage Jr. is a good player out of the Packers, but again, he's a free safety. And this is where I wish over the cap separated strong safeties and free safeties because bungling together makes it hard. Keanu Neal's out there. Obviously, the Steelers let him go. Do not bring him back. I don't think they would. They're not going to release him on medical reasons and not bring him back. I'm sorry, and bring him back, um, of course. Xavier McKinney could be interesting on the Giants, but I think it'd be too expensive. Terrell Edmonds, Geno Stone, if Geno Stone doesn't get re-signed by the Ravens, 
are two interesting options for the Steelers to go back to Terrell Edmonds. Um, and then I think Rodney Harrison and Jeremy Chin are also available. Yep, Jeremy Chin's available. And I think Rodney Har- R- Ronnie Harrison's available out of the Colts. I do like him. He's a nice big size um, a guy that, you know, could fit quite well for the Steelers. Same as Adrian Amos, but Adrian Amos is getting up there at 31. Um, so I don't really like that age-wise. Jeremy Chin would be awesome in this team. Um, so I really hope the Steelers will look at a guy like him or get someone familiar to Terrell Edmonds. And then obviously... Miles Killigrew is technically a safety. We want them to bring him back as a special teamer. Then we move on to cornerback, which is the last position of this free agency focus show. And this list is probably the longest out of all the positions that we've covered. Um, and they are, I've only gone deep in what I screenshotted you guys to like as far as Trey Herndon. Um, and there's plenty of other players in the list below him as well. So, it is kind of an interesting mix this year. There's a lot of cornerbacks. Obviously, it's key position. The Steelers got to get better. After Trey Herndon, guys are on the screen. If any of you super zooming in, Christian Fulton's guys played a lot of snaps. Had didn't have a great year at the Titans. A lot of Titans didn't. Um, they talked about this on. Um, they talked about this on Locked On Draft and NFL Scouting. Um, but Christian Fulton could be a really cheap experiment guy. Um, had a really high grade on him. They had a lot of teams coming out you know, in the draft a few years back. He's only 26 years old. The upside is huge. He'd be better than bringing back um, James Pierre, who's 28, who the Steelers um, have now as a free agent again. Shannon Sullivan, you could see the Steelers bring him back as well. Um, but I do think in terms of like the better co- the better or more experienced, more starting caliber guys, you're probably going to Trey Herndon, who's 28, you're probably looking at a guy, maybe Isaiah Oliver, if someone they want to take a punt. I don't see that. Rocky Sin could be interesting at 28. I like him. Same as CJ Henderson, who played with the Panthers. He's 26. Jeff Akuda's out there, but being a bit injury plagued, but he's very young at 25. Had a, got dropped in the first round as well. Um, so he can be really interesting. Kenny Moore's probably the best slot corner on this list. Probably, they're probably the best out, outside corner is either Kendall Fuller or maybe a Dory Jackson. A Dory Jackson can't play in the slot, though. There is JC Jackson, Jackson on the list, but I don't like how much he's moved around between teams. I do not like that, and I don't think the Steelers should go after him. Also, the Steelers should go back to Levi Wallace or Patrick Peterson or Steven Nelson. Um, none of those guys on that list. So there are not so many names at cornerback in a year the Steelers need a cornerback, and this is might be where you see the Steelers overpay on cornerback more than some fans might have thought going into this offseason. But hey, that is our show for today on Free Agents. See, that it will all kick off at 12 p.m. Eastern time. That is why I'm watching the video now. Let me know in the comments. Is there a free agent that I've mentioned that you really want? Is there a position that you want to be targeted over another position? Is there positions that you want draft versus free agency? Really keen to find out in the comments. That's what we've had some really good comments going in the community um, as of late on Still Touching Under, and it's been so awesome to see, so enjoying being part of that with you guys. And if you are regularly watching the shows and you're not a sub, hit that sub button. We are on a goal to hit 500 subs before the draft. That is my goal. I'm working hard toward that. So we would appreciate the sub. And if you like the video, hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down button so I know you do something different next time. But as always, go Steelers.